Welcome back everyone. Today I will continue yesterday's topic of niche theory. Species of species nature and their specific roles which they play within ecosystem. These species have been named as native species, non-native species, indicator species, keystone species and foundation species. Native species are those that normally live and thrive in a particular ecosystem. Other species that migrate into or are deliberately or accidentally introduced into an ecosystem are called non-native species. These non-native species also referred as invasive species, alien species and sometimes exotic species. Some people think non-native species always as villain but it is not true in all cases as most introduced and domesticated animals like chickens cattle and fish from around the world are beneficial to us however some non-native species can threaten a communities of native species and cause unintended and unexpected consequences if think worldwide then example of african bees is there in 1957 when brazil imported wild african bees which also known as uh, killer bees So Brazil had imported these bees to increase honey production. Instead, the bees displaced domestic honey bees and reduced the honey supply. Since then, these honey bees are renowned as killer bees. They have moved northward into Central America and parts of the southwestern and southeastern US. And the wild African bees are not as fearsome as have been portrayed in horror movies but they are no doubt aggressive and unpredictable. They have killed thousands of domestic animals over there and even human population too. If talk about India and non-native species in India so presently we have about 173 species of invasive alien plants and these plant species includes Cassia, Uniflora, well-known wheat, Lantana camara, Parthenium hysterophorus, Prosophis juliflora, Iconia crassis and Chromolena odorata. These species are existing in Indian subcontinent and most of the time the role of these species have been seen in the form of to uproot the existing native community of plants. Indicator species found almost everywhere and are affected quickly by environmental changes such as loss of fragmentation of their habitats and introduction of chemical pesticides. When talk about indicator species, so birds, butterflies and obviously amphibians. They comes to mind as birds are excellent indicators because they are found almost everywhere and are affected quickly by environmental changes such as loss of fragmentation of their habitats and introduction of chemical pesticides. There are many birds in India whose populations are declining due to the same effect. Whereas butterflies are also a good indicator species because their association 
with various plant species makes them vulnerable to habitat loss and fragmentation in case of amphibians uh, we all know about the amphibians presence or when they come out and when they hibernate in the favorable seasons like during monsoon they come out and in unfavorable seasons they hibernate which indicates the seasonal changes keystone species are those have a large effect on the types and abundance of other species in an ecosystem the term is keystone it means a wedge shaped stone which is placed at the top of a stone archway if removes this keystone then the entire arc collapses research and some ecologists hypothesize that in certain communities and ecosystems certain species play a similar role of keystone species the effects that keystone species have in their ecosystems is often much larger than their numbers would suggest and because of their relatively limited numbers some keystone species are more vulnerable to extinction than others are for instance india has several critically important keystone species including tiger elephant rhino bear etc not to mention here an entire array of trees and shrubs that are vital to the survival of the ecosystem If I eliminate a keystone species it may dramatically alter the structure and function of a community Keystone species play several critical roles which help to sustain an ecosystem such as population regulation of prey species pollination etc For say tiger or lion or other large carnivores eat preferably upon ungulates of large size and ungulates on preferable plant species so by eating on ungulates tiger keep a check on the entire community of an ecosystem if remove the tigers which is playing a role of keystone species the entire ecosystem will become imbalance in case of pollination there are many species which are helping or speeding up the process of pollination these species include birds bees butterflies and bat Let's remove this name right now. Although it is also playing an important role, and yeah, definitely porcupine. These species are playing an important role in seed dispersal. If talk about the marine ecosystem, so alligators, mugger, they are keeping a check on marine community. so loss of a keystone species it can lead to population crashes and extinction of other species in a community that depends on it for certain services
फाउंडेशन स्पीशीज आर दो विच प्ले अ मेजर रोल इन शेपिंग कम्युनिटीज बाय क्रिएटिंग एंड एनहैंसिंग देयर हैबिटेट्स इन वेज दैट बेनिफिट्स अदर स्पीशीज फाउंडेशन स्पीशीज इज अ डोमिनेंट प्राइमरी प्रोड्यूसर इन एन इको सिस्टम बोथ इन टर्म्स ऑफ अबंडेंस एंड इन्फ्लुएंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल kelp in kelp forest and corals in coral reefs about kelp i had talked in detail in my previous lecture another examples include the role of elephants it's a very renowned example elephants push over break or uproot trees create forest openings in the grasslands and woodlands the role of foundation species promotes the growth of grasses and other plants that benefit smaller grazing societies or species such as antelopes ungulate species etc some other small herbivore species many bird species it also accelerates nutrient cycling rates another example includes beaver it is also one of the good example of foundation species and beavers act as ecological engineer they build dams in streams to create ponds and other wetlands used by other species some bird species play a role of pollination by leaving their droppings at different places see keystone and foundation species play similar roles in general the major differences between the two types of species is that foundation species help to create habitats and ecosystems they often do this almost literally by providing the foundation for the ecosystem as beavers are doing on the other hand keystone species can do this and more they sometimes play the foundation role as marine species alligators crocodiles are doing but they also play an active role in maintaining the ecosystem and keeping it functioning in a way that serves the other species living there if talk about these marine predators or keystone species they also keep the water in its habitat clear of invading vegetation for use by other species that need open water on the basis of feeding habits of feeding niche species have been classified at two levels generalist and specialist on the basis of feeding habits generally species have broad niches they can live in many different places eat a variety of foods and often tolerate a wide range of environmental conditions examples include well known is leopard in others cockroach mice rat white tailed deer raccoon specialist species occupy narrow niches they may be able to live in only one type of habitat use one or few types of food or tolerate a narrow range of climatic and other environmental conditions this specialization about habitat food item 
and environmental conditions make special species more prone to extinction when these conditions change the examples of specialist species include herbivores feeding preference on plants except this this is a very common example of a specialist species next is asiatic lion live in dry deciduous forest of semi arid region and feed upon large sized ungulates probably the next example is monophagus koala i write it here koala it subsists almost entirely on eucalyptus leaf next is panda which are an excellent example of a herbivore specialist as they have a specific niche that they live and their diet consist only and only of bamboo okay this generalis species which is most adaptable and prolific in its diet specialized feeding niches of various bird species in our coastal wetland this is specialization among these bird species it reduces reduces competition and allow sharing of limited resources such as the large size flamingo feed on minute organisms in mud where black skimmer sees small fishes from water surface and well known other examples if i will see scap and other diving ducks feed on mollusks crustaceans and aquatic vegetation pelicans or the birds they dive to catch prey they dive for catching fish which is locates or located from the air or from a far distance avocet sweeps bill through mud and surface water in search of small invertebrates or some seeds scent piper picks up worms and small crustaceans left by receding tide herring gull is a tireless scavenger from a distance and piping plover or all species of plover feed on six and tiny invertebrate species so all these species are having their different prey preference which is reducing competition for feeding items even the same process is having or it is occurring in species of all taxes either it is a water species or it is canopy species etc from the diet of asiatic lion in the leopards it can feed upon any prey item from rodents to large sized nilgai or from wild to domestic livestock it can live in any kind of habitat from forest to fringe habitat of the park or forest to villages 
or in metro cities anywhere they can live and on any prey item they can feed upon which makes this species a generalist species which doesn't restrict them to live to survive or to increase its number okay hutchinson's work inspired by many others to develop models to explain that how many and how similar species can coexist together can survive in a same community of an ecosystem and this interest led to the concepts of niche breadth niche overlap and niche separation even uh, one more concept was developed that is a niche construction it is a niche construction right so niche breadth it is the variety of resources or habitats used by uh, used by a given set of species or sympatric species so you can explain niche breadth by picking examples of either large carnivores or any other uh, animal take so niche partitioning or say niche separation it is also known as partitioning right it determines uh, the coexistence of two species where the habitat or any uh, feeding item is differing between these two coexisting species means differentiation between habitat use and uh, preferable species the third one is niche overlap it shows that what habitat or prey are of common interest or means which habitat is being preferred by two or more sympatric coexisting species or what prey species are being preferred by two or more sympatric predator species for an example if uh, i'll um, give a name of ungulate species cheetal so it is a preferable prey item for asiatic lion or as well as leopard but this is also the preferred prey item for leopard as well as tiger in case of coexistence of these two sympatric species or in these two uh, sympatric species so variety of resources or habitats used by given species that is a niche overlap and resource differentiation by coexisting species that is niche partitioning right so with ending this lecture here i am leaving a question for you guys is it better to be a generalist or a specialist so first think about and uh, explain it with suitable examples and conclude with ecological perspective because the study of ecology it gives us pragmatic ideas or say approach 
to culminate any uh, existing problem or disturbance if it is a case otherwise it will assist you to enhance the condition the situation of a given ecosystem wherever you are working so i'll uh, stop this lecture here i'll start new lecture tomorrow till yet bye bye